Hey learners, welcome back. It's CS3244 Machine Learning. And now that you've had a taste of neural network architectures from last week, it's time to go to the very popular lecture of deep learning, right? So we're going to go a little deeper, pardon the pun. So this week we're going to talk with two experts in our own school, Angela Yao, who does computer vision research, as well as Hui Tao Ang, who does natural language processing. So they're both here on this call, so uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's lecture. So Angela, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Angela Yao, and I'm an assistant professor at the School of Computing at NUS. Uh, my group and I, we work on computer vision, and this is a branch of artificial intelligence that uh, focuses on doing automated interpretation of images and video. Hi, everyone. I'm Hui Tao. I'm a provost chair professor in the Department of Computer Science at NUS. My group conducts research in natural language processing. The goal is to enable computers to understand and generate human languages. Thanks, Hui Tao. Thanks, Angela. So we noticed that uh, deep learning is a very important part of the change of paradigm in uh, traditional machine learning to a, a more contemporary one. Now, it's the case that deep learning is such a vast area now that it deserves its own course or courses. And definitely, you can further your own knowledge within the School of Computing. Just take the follow-on courses from our experts. However, in this basic course, we only have one lecture for it, uh, and that's just enough to give you a starting point for doing projects in this area. So definitely, you will want to further your studies if you're doing a project involving deep learning. And that also means that you'll need to um, take a look at courses that are on the web or outside that may also feature some of these information. Okay, there are lots of good courses and videos that you can find that can give you more uh, in-depth analysis of certain algorithms within the architectures that we're going to describe today. But for today, we're going to stick to two different model architectures that are very important. And that is notably the CNN, which is uh, originally good for computer vision, and the RNN, or recurrent neural network, which is good for sequential data sources. So let's start and hear from the experts themselves. So Angela, let's start with you. How does the CNN play a role in computer vision research? Yes, so CNNs, they're now the basic workhorse of uh, computer vision algorithms, and they feature in almost every single task that we might do. And this ranges from low-level processing tasks, such as uh, denoising or image super resolution, more high-level semantic tasks, such as object detection or tracking. The reason why we like to use CNNs is because they're incredibly effective at extracting information from images and video at scale. What this means is that we can put in lots of data to the CNN, and the network is able to learn and hierarchically extract and build upwards from local edges and corners to parts, and finally to entire objects and visual concepts as a whole. So thanks, Angela, for that. So let's turn it over to Hui Tao. So Hui Tao, you know, in natural language processing research, we often have a sequence of language data. So how does an RNN help in uh, processing language data? RNNs, or recurrent neural networks, are a class of neural networks that are capable of capturing subtle patterns and regularities in sequences. An RNN can represent an arbitrary size sequence of inputs as a fixed size vector. RNNs are particularly good at processing sequential inputs, where an input early in the sequence can affect subsequent inputs, even though they are far apart. Natural language is inherently sequential in nature, where a sequence of characters forms a word, a sequence of words forms a sentence, and a sequence of sentences forms a document. Within NLP, RNNs have been used in a variety of tasks, including part of speech tagging, name identity recognition, sentiment analysis, and machine translation. 
Great, thanks for that response. So I think we have enough to get started now. So we'll see you on the backside. We'll be back with Angela and Huitao at the end of our post lecture. That's for now, let's get started.